Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about carbon fiber props and doing a little bit of myth busting with regards to their effect on GPS. So uh, there was a couple comments, and I thought it was interesting and, and worth doing a video on, in the fact there were concerns that the carbon fiber props would impact GPS functionality. Uh, because one of the things you notice a while back, I did a video with the Up Air running these uh, tri-blade tri -blade carbon fiber props. I'll spit that out. And I had some issues with it. And, you know, some folks wrote, hey, well, you know, it's because you're using carbon fiber props. It's messing with the GPS. And that's not it, folks. Uh, the, the up airs tend to develop a mind of their own sometimes. And I can delve into that because of the lack of the ability to compass calibrate and do several other things. I, I personally think is the problem. But um, the focus here is I want to talk about GPS and carbon fiber blades. So... The first thing that I want to start with is the GPS antenna in here. So the GPS antenna is about a two inch or so disc located in the top of the fuselage chassis right about here. So if we take a look at about what that two, two inch diameter is, it's about here. So if I take this red plastic cup, this is about two inches and if I place it over the top, that's roughly the, the antenna receiving area for GPS. Now, there's a foil underneath to create a ground plane and also to insulate the antenna from the EMI and RFI radiation created by the electronics below. Uh, but again, that's simply to create isolation and act as sort of a bit of a ground plane. So it, it, that is not the receiving antenna. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But before we get there, one of the things I want to back up a little bit and do is now that we have our pseudo uh, antenna uh, area up there. I want to show you guys something. So if I put the props on, the props are are well clear of this cup. So I still have um, obviously a clear sight to this cup. Now one of the things you guys might say, well, oh, you know, what happens if it comes in from the side and all this other stuff? And, and basically that isn't the case. And I'm going to talk about propagation here in a second. However, before I talk about propagation, let's talk a little bit what carbon fiber is. So carbon fiber, this is really a carbon fiber epoxy. This is not solid carbon fiber. Uh, what happens is a sheet of um, material, um, it, you know, it's basically a plastic material superheated, turned into carbon, and then it's woven into basically this, this mesh material you see here and then it's encased in epoxy and what happens is there you know or a resin basically like epoxy uh, for those purists out there that'll probably stand to correct me uh, however the idea is is this is only a composite it's a mixed material being a mixed material and being the fact that this is this is only partially carbon is that it this is more of an absorption factor than it is a reflecting factor this is not metal this is not like metal this won't will not react to radio like metal so it's more of an absorption so um, carbon fiber in general has about four percent radio absorption uh, so it is fairly radio translucent now it's not perfectly translucent so I don't want to give that opinion you know so I would not build an antenna housing of carbon fiber uh, because you're going to attenuate your your gain but some radio waves are still going to pass it and we'll do some tests a little bit later outside with this but before we get there I want to work out the bench stuff so again if I put this on here you see I have I have very you know clear plain and clear sight um, to get to this now you might say oh you know you got satellites on the horizon and everything well GPS really doesn't sort of work like that so um, it, it, and, and, and I want to talk a little bit about antenna propagation now how this GPS antenna works so I'm going to put a propagation chart up in the corner and one of the things I'm going to also take a little bit uh, let's move this back a little bit and let's sort of draw this out because one of the things you have is your your antenna surface and I'm going to represent it by this line here and then I'm going to call this positive and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green and then remember I was mentioning that you'll probably in there see like a foil and that foil is acting as the ground or insulator from all the uh, electronics which are below it that are creating either EMI uh, electromagnetic interference or radio frequency interference if I spell this right and then what happens is the radio waves 
from the GPS satellite um, strike this surface and this is your receiving surface this up here now one of the things on the surface of this what it may look like is you have a hundred and eighty degree uh, view of the sky now and, and so you come back and say well Joe you know this antenna sits down a little bit below these props so you you know you're cutting off maybe a little bit or attenuating a little bit of the horizon and well not quite really because one of the things you'll see at the propagation chart inside is there is a bubble however also with this bubble happens to be a cone so now if I draw a vertical line here and then what I do is I also take it and you'll notice like um, the uh, cone there's a 60 degree or about 120 degree total area or sweet spot for this so as we drop off into this area in this area here our signal is is attenuated quite a bit so you you know on the periphery you're not going to pick up a lot of the signal so most of your signal is going to be picked up in this cone area so th these props are really not going to have any type of effect on the reception of your GPS signal now you sit here and say but Joe these are spinning and, and that's acting like a solid disk right and and what I have to point out is something uh, from high school physics how fast is the speed of light which is approximately how fast radio waves travel that's 186,000 miles per second that's pretty fast these props they don't turn anywhere near that quick so as, as we have radio waves coming down striking our antenna even if we did have these blades turning um, for the little bit of time in this 186,000 miles per second that they're going to be interfering with this or attenuating something uh, it's going to be very, 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 very small because the pieces, now I know you guys are going to hit me up and say, oh, you know, maybe this is one electron, 186,000 miles. There is a packet that gets transmitted of information, obviously, from the satellite to this. It's a time code. It's not a very big packet. However, this packet is still traveling at this speed. So the majority basically um, very few packets would be attenuated and not enough I could I could not see enough packets being attenuated uh, to cause an effect on the GPS so I, I really think that the concerns of carbon fiber props and GPS is, is a great misnomer now the one other piece is that people brought up you know PID and PID is basically um, the mathematical equation that the controller uses to adjust for changes so as your copter tilts and everything it uses the pit and algorithm to determine how much and how fast to compensate because if it just revved up the motor to full power this thing would be jerking all over the place overshooting and undershooting the target so pit allows it to come back online or, or not really over or undershoot the target and the, the piece is, you know, some of the comments was, well, this is going to mess up PID. Well, PID has a value range in it, you know, so you have a value range from worst to worst, worst to best. And again, you have a bit of a range. Now, obviously, you want it to be as best as possible. However, you still have a range, and so PID is not perfect. And I'm not going to go into all the math of PID. Um, on my 3D printing channel, I talked quite a bit about PID because it's used actually in 3D printers to adjust the temperature of the hot end. You know, so it, it keeps it fairly constant because that's what you want to do. But it's not perfect. And so therefore, the effect of PID here is going to be very minimal. Uh, per se. Now, if you're flying an FPV copter or something, the story is going to be a little bit different. So, you know, flying one of these is like, you know, driving a Cadillac versus flying an FPV like Mr. Steel does or Rotorite or all those guys. You know, that's like, you know, driving a Ferrari or a Maserati or something like that. You know, you get in there, the steering's tight, you want a very quick response to your action. Uh, because what's going to happen no matter what is the internal controls of this are going to adjust the copter 
And it's just a matter of how proportional that adjustment is going to be to the outcome of the adjustment. So I've had no issues flying either the up air or this with stock settings on this. Now I do believe, and, and somebody a little bit more experienced in the uh, Phantom 3 can tell me, but I believe under advanced options, um, you can set the performance characteristics uh, of this so you can adjust for props and different uh, type of weight configurations and things like that. So uh, again, there's probably some fine tuning adjustments you could do to make this better, but is this going to lead to horrible instability? I doubt it. I haven't had that experience. Always do things at your own risk, so um, I haven't had a problem. Uh, and so the, the pieces you saw in the up air are simply the up air itself. I've flown this copter uh, several times in various configurations and have had no issues with carbon fiber. So with that, one of the things I want to take a look at um, is let's take this outside. Let's get a few satellites and let's go ahead and put, um, you know, let's be a little bit more uh, Mythbuster-ish, if you will. Let's try it with a sheet of carbon fiber on top of here and, and a sheet of metal and that kind of stuff and let's see what happens. Okay, welcome outside, suburbia. Uh, Michigan so uh, neighbors cutting lawns everything else so uh, maybe a little bit of background noise but I've got the copter set up over here I've got the props off of it as you can see in the video re uh, screen recording from the go application I believe I've got eight satellites let me just double check if I have it sitting on the ground so yep I've got eight satellites now I'm not in the best location when it comes to getting satellites because I'm just in my backyard on my porch but what I want to go ahead and do now is put these um, props on and put them in the worst possible position and let's see if that changes the satellite count. Okay, so we have those on. Don't mind the chainsaw in the background. And let's take a look. And uh, if anything, the satellite count has gone up uh, since me putting the props on. So uh, I'm now from eight, I'm at nine, it was at 10. There's gonna be a little bit of fluctuation because again, I'm not in the best location here, but I still have now more satellites than I started with. So, you know, clearly, it's not making any type of difference in the uh, satellite count uh, with putting those carbon fiber props on. Now, let's take this to another level. Let's actually put a sheet of carbon fiber over top of the GPS antenna. Now, this sheet of carbon fiber, this is, uh, I think, uh, I can't remember if it's 1 16th, I think it's 1 16th carbon fiber. But this is real carbon fiber, not fake. All right, so we've put the carbon fiber over the top, and that is, as I anticipated, a pure sheet of carbon fiber actually affecting it a little bit. Okay, so I gave it a few minutes to set, set up. Now, the satellites did drop down to about four, but they've now recovered to five, and they've been as high as six. So as I anticipated, there is a measure of attenuation, uh, but as you can see, the satellites are still getting through the carbon fiber because now this has been, I've left this, I paused the video and I've left this sit on here now for several minutes, but you notice that the satellites are also reestablishing, are now up to seven satellites uh, in the mix. So again, I see no way that these props are going to interfere with the GPS signals of the satellite. So let's go ahead and switch this up from um, the uh, carbon fiber to a straight piece of bronze or brass. Okay, so I've put the piece of brass sheet uh, sheeting on there. That's like a 1 16th or 1 uh, inch sheet and it's completely covering the antenna. So let's go ahead, I'm going to pause the video here, speed it up, and uh, uh, we'll watch what happens after a couple minutes because I'm still reading five satellites with a piece of metal on top of the GPS antenna and in a bad location. 
Okay, so I've let it sit for a couple minutes. Um, again, sorry for the background noise. Neighbor's out blowing his lawn or something. Uh, but I've, I've now has I have seven satellites and I have a piece of uh, brass sheeting covering the top of completely covering the top of the GPS antenna, as you can see. So I, I'm going to say, guys, worrying about carbon fiber props messing with your GPS is just um, not something you should worry about. Because, again, if you can have a piece of solid metal covering the top of your GPS and it's still receiving and having enough satellites ready to launch in GPS mode, uh, basically as many satellites <laughs> as I had without the metal, um, again, I think carbon fiber props are a problem. So, anyways, with this, I am going to say this myth is busted, that carbon fiber props don't affect GPS uh, because we've tested it with props, we've tested it with a sheet of carbon fiber, and then we've also tested it with a sheet of metal. And again, I've gotten enough signal to fly in all three scenarios, and you saw with the props, it had zero effect at all. So, anyways, uh, hopefully this was an interesting video for you. I maybe, uh, hopefully, uh, laid some... Uh, miss to rest and uh, hey give it a thumbs up also subscribe button coming up over there and we'll see you in the next video hit me up in the comments below if you got questions cheers